So when it comes to creatine, which form is better, creatine monohydrate or creatine hydrochloride? Now, let's talk about, before we dive into this recently published study that actually compared the two different creatines head to head in about 45 or so young athletes between the ages of 18 and 25, it's really the best sort of head to head comparison that we have on creatine monohydrate versus creatine hydrochloride. But what is monohydrate and what is hydrochloride? Very simply, we have the creatine molecule that again, your body makes, your liver and your kidneys and actually your brain makes creatine from arginine and glycine as well as methionine. So your body makes this, your cells make it. It's mostly made in your liver, but also made in your kidneys. 95% of body creatine is actually stored in your skeletal muscle. Uh, this, the other 5% is distributed pretty evenly throughout the heart and the brain and other tissues, uh, especially the eye, also the ears. We know that creatine it basically helps improve cellular energy metabolism. And it, it's important to recognize before we talk about monohydrate versus hydrochloride, that creatine is not directly anabolic. It helps increase cellular energy so that you have better training stimulus. And in so doing, you have more anabolic stimuli to the skeletal muscle. So that's important to remember. This isn't like a hormone or a pro-hormone. It doesn't cause hair loss. We have reviewed those studies that I can link in the description or the cards where we talked about that. Creatine is safe for both men and women of all ages, even infants and newborns. The placenta leverages a lot of creatine as well. Okay, so that being said, before we talk about what this study did and compared in terms of testing the relative differences or between group differences between creatine monohydrate and creatine hydrochloride, let's talk about the chemical structure here. So you have creatine, which again, is endogenously made from essential amino acids. The two essential amino acids that it's made from is arginine uh, as well as methionine. And so yeah, glycine is not an essential amino acid, uh, but it's important to recognize that your cells make this stuff. And so when we get creatine exogenously in the form of a supplement, we have several different forms. And this paper actually does a good job of talking about this. They do say there are many forms of creatine on the market, including creatine nitrate, creatine citrate, creatine ethyl ester, and buffered forms of creatine, which are not bioavailable sources of creatine and are less effective or more expensive than creatine monohydrate. They say creatine monohydrate is the most commonly used type of creatine, which combines, this is where I was going, it combines creatine and water. So the monohydrate, think hydration, water. So it's creatine bound with basically water. It's generally, generally safe, degrading slowly, even at high temperatures and low pHs. Intestinal absorption of creatine monohydrate is close to 100%, and it has a very high purity. That's why I like it, especially the raw material that has been synthesized in Europe when compared to the raw material synthesized in China. We've done many videos on this. There are two contaminants that you want to look out for. Well, really three when it comes to creatine, dicyandiamide, dihydrotriazine, as well as creatinine. Now, creatinine is a natural byproduct of ammonia metabolism uh, in your kidneys, and creatinine can cause problems in the body. Now, I know when you look at the word creatinine, it looks phonetically like creatine, but it's we're talking about two different molecules here. And so some of the raw material, raw material coming from China has higher levels of the dicyandiamide, dihydrotriazine, and creatinine. So that's why over at Myoscience, uh, my biases here is I also you know have a supplement manufacturing facility and company. We we exclusively use the German material. Uh, really great folks over at Allscan Biotech. So. For any you know creatine variations, we have stick packs, we have it paired with electrolytes, we have micronized versus unmicronized. I'll put links in the description below. Uh, there's a lot of adulterated creatine products on the market, and that's why we are doing what we're doing. So there's that. Now, what about the creatine hydrochloride? Well, creatine hydrochloride is a salt, so hydro HCl. So think like betaine HCl. It's really basically stomach acid, right? But why is this not really needed? Well, you have HCl in your stomach. You know, I mean, this as soon as you swallow creatine monohydrate, right, it's introduced to hydrochloride, uh, hydrochloric acid uh, in your stomach. And so this salt uh, is theorized to have better water solubility. And so that's the big shtick here. The raw material uh, suppliers that are promoting the creatine hydrochloride, which all of it is made in China, right? There's there's no non-Chinese creatine hydrochloride on the market. So you're still getting the creatine derived, the raw material, calcium carbide from, from limestone, essentially, undergoing all these chemical reactions to actually end up with creatine. 
but it's all of the, the hydrochloride is manufactured in China. And so that's another reason why I'm not a huge fan of it because as we have reviewed before, many papers and my own sort of investigation into, into this has found that the Chinese raw material is adulterated oftentimes with the dicyndiamide and the dihydrotriazine as well as other things like arsenic and, and potentially mercury and things you don't really want. And so I'm that's one reason why I'm not a huge fan of that. The second reason is it's significantly more expensive. And then the third reason is I've talked to the folks at Allschem Biotech. Um, I know several uh, folks there in Germany. And I'm like, well, why haven't you all looked at this? Where they're like, well, we have. And there's nothing exciting about it. It's significantly more expensive. And it doesn't have any human data showing it's better absorbed. So why would we sell it? And I was like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense, right? If they wanted to, they could, but they choose not to because it's not superior. But instead, they make a micronized version of creatine uh, that's really well absorbed and um, is more water soluble and that doesn't have GI issues. But that's that's the push, you know, on different supplement companies selling the hydrochloride. It's more expensive. It's a salt. It's purportedly has better water solubility. But this study compared head to head um, hydrochloride versus monohydrate in athletes and had them do resistant training and they had a placebo group that did not that did resistant training but but no creatine whatsoever and the the short end uh, you know the short of the long story is there was no between group differences when comparing monohydrate versus hydrochloride so i think that's the most important thing is if you're going to take something that's more expensive you would think that if you were to randomize some 45 young athletes to do one dimension intervention or the other that there would be some between group differences and there just wasn't. Um, and so this is just one study, but we don't have any really good human evidence to suggest that creatine hydrochloride is any better. There's some short-term absorption studies, some in vivo, uh, sorry, in vitro type stuff. Uh, and, and we really don't have any uh, data here. But what I like about this study is they looked at strength and they also looked at various hormonal responses, looking at testosterone, growth hormone, IGF-1, testosterone to cortisol ratios, on and on, uh, changes in leg press versus bench press strength and squat, uh, as well as thigh muscle circumference area. I mean, they looked at all these different aspects and there was no between group differences comparing the monohydrate versus hydrochloride uh, dosing and they did do a, a loading phase initially uh, as well as in both groups uh, but that being said there were between group differences between both creatine groups and the placebo group that did not take creatine but was also resistance training at the same time concurrently and so basically we can surmise from this that there is no advantage one way or the other if you like you know creatine hydrochloride and you want to pay a little bit more for that because you think it's better absorbed or whatever, that's fine. But just know that it's significantly more expensive and all the raw materials made in China. And so I would just make sure that you know that the company that you're buying it from is third party testing the raw material for the well-known contaminants, which again, dicyndiamide, dihydrotriazine, as well as creatinine, uh, and the heavy metals, arsenic, lead, and mercury. Okay. So in conclusion, the investigators say the results show that hydrochloride and creatine monohydrate supplementation along with resistant training increased muscle strength in both the leg press as well as bench press, arm and thigh muscle circumference area. Um, but the changes between the different groups were insignificant. Uh, so that's important to know. Now, regarding the effects of creatine hydrochloride on performance, we can refer to studies by Tarebi et al. and Arezi, um, finding that five grams of creatine HDL per day improved upper and lower body uh, muscle strength over the course of four weeks, but only creatine hydrochloride changed body composition, they say. And they were comparing uh, creatine monohydrate to hydrochloride at five grams a day. Now, the thing about this, which I think is important to recognize that creatine hydrochloride at five grams a day is going to cost significantly more than creatine monohydrate. Um, so just it's, the, the practical nature of it is that it's significantly more expensive. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why that is. I think it, I don't know, it's not even a branded raw material. But, you know, in conclusion, the investigators say here that according to the available information, solubility does not affect creatine's bioavailability. Creatine monohydrate is 100% bioavailable. As Credit et al. stated in a systematic review, 
that claims that the creatine hydrochloride is more bioavailable and more effective than creatine monohydrate are not supported, which is consistent with the results of the present study. So again, if you want to take the hydrochloride, that's fine, but you're going to pay a lot more money on a, on a per gram basis of creatine. Uh, most of the studies on creatine are, are pretty clear. The dose on the monohydrate starts on the low end of 2.5 grams per day up to 5 grams per day is a maintenance uh, and it's probably better for brain function if you start out with a 20 gram load phase for about a week and then taper down to 2 to 5 grams per day as a maintenance. Now, if you undergo uh, a poor night's sleep or have social jet lag or actual jet lag from travel, um, you can offset the cognitive decline that is linked with short sleep duration by having a super physiologic amount of creatine that day, like 20 grams per day. So that's what the research shows. Um, I'm all about you know, optimization and, and being a, a zealot when it comes to raw materials. I'm not overly impressed with the hydrochloride, especially considering that it's significantly more expensive. So I would like to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'm grateful that you tuned into, the, tuned into this video. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button, share this with a friend, and we'll catch you in a future show down the road. Bye now.